Hi, brothers and sisters. Jerry O'Donnell here with Four Angels Messages. Here to present, I guess you could say this is part three about focusing on the mind and why we are doing such a word search of the Bible uh, is to get every aspect to be completely defending what comes into our mind since that is the last battleground. That's what Satan's after is our minds. Hence why there's such an increase of things like entertainment, um, all the uh, false news reports, uh, fake news as they refer to it as, and everything else that goes with playing with the mind, uh, well, AI too. All of these things are culminating into trying to get us to think away from God, and all of it is to prepare us to do battle with God. And, and so, when a person's mind is set in a certain way, it's easy to get them to do uh, their bidding. And, you know, some people say that they would never do such and such an act, but when you are conditioned to perform a certain thing, even though you feel like, you know, you're separated from your body almost, that you don't want to be participating, but yet there you are participating in it, uh, and you don't understand it, it's because you've been conditioned. And that is uh, what society has been doing with, with social media and everything else that goes with it. And so let's delve into this again, finding out that the word thought, and that's not the only thing we're going to look up, um, actually culminates in, again, leading us to a topic of uh, future events. And so let us be well prepared, but before we do that, let's get a word of prayer in. Our Father, thank you so very much for this time to spend with thee in thy word. I pray that you will prepare our minds to do battle against Satan <clears throat> and all the temptations that come in daily, and that we would be able to be strong enough to resist, but <clears throat> also be able to discern. Uh, that is uh, uh, the, the real challenge and I pray that uh, you would help us to discern rightly and uh, divide thy word properly, uh, rightly doing so, and being all along the way convicted of sin, of righteousness, and of judgment. Help us, I pray, in Jesus' name. Amen. The title of this message is actually Bringing Every Thought into Captivity, because that is what, to the will of God, of course, that is primarily... Uh, our goal is that we actually have a grasp on our thoughts instead of every thought that comes in it comes out our mouth every thought that comes in it comes out in our actions we want to be in discipline because that's we're disciples of Christ and that means we are disciplined to follow the word and his commandments but if we're not thinking correctly uh, how can we be disciplined so, uh, I have a shorter list of questions. There was 138 verses, basic, uh, by the way, on this topic. And uh, of those verses, not all of them uh, are applicable. So, you, we're not going to go through 138 verses. Uh, you know, simply saying that, uh, oh, uh, uh, I thought what he's, about what he said. Okay, that's just a statement. But uh, such as the verse I quoted, and we'll quote it again, uh, bringing every thought into captivity, that's important and pertinent to this message, and so that would be included. So let's get started with asking, what are certain thoughts considered? Let's go to Proverbs 24, and I just want to let you know that not every thought that comes into our minds is evil, okay? So I'm not against thinking. I highly encourage thinking. Let's uh, uh, do so on a regular basis. Proverbs chapter 24, verse 9, the Bible says, The thought of, a, of foolishness is sin, and the scorner is an abomination to men. Let's go to Proverbs chapter 15, shall we, and get a second reference on this. And we're just going to get two references here. In Proverbs 15, let's take a look here at the 26th verse. The Bible says, the thoughts of the wicked are an abomination to the Lord, but the words of the pure are pleasant words. So when we think 
wickedly, and we got to clarify here because a lot of people uh, misunderstand that word wicked. They they think uh, it's somebody like Hitler and Stalin and uh, Mao Zedong and um, I, I can't, Pharaoh of Egypt long ago. Uh, they think those are wicked men. But folks, any allowance of sin in our life, however small it happens to be, can, it makes us on the side of the wicked. Because only the wicked are going to perish at the end of time. Only the righteous are going to go into the kingdom. And this is not a percentage thing either. Well, I'm 65% righteous, so I get to go in, right? No. We either are all righteous or we are wicked. And so let us be very careful in those definitions. So therefore, uh, any thoughts towards any evil, entertaining those thoughts is, uh, uh, well, uh, on the wrong side. And also foolishness, you know, all the foolish talking that, that goes on, whatever it happens to be. And a uh, uh, and if you bring in the things of the world into conversation and in deep conversation, uh, you know, it's one thing to talk about a, a celebrity in passing of, you know, uh, did you hear what happened at the Super Bowl? Such and such singer brought out a, uh, a golden calf uh, to be worshipped. And that's different. Uh, but to talk about uh, where that celebrity happens to be touring and how many fans show up and um, and how you used to like their music, all of that, now you're on the side of foolishness. It's foolish to be talking about that. The obvious foolishness happens to be all the jesting that goes on and and just razzing one another, and it's just a waste of energy. And God doesn't like it. In fact, he calls it a sin. And we are actually counseled in this New Testament that to, we are to avoid such things as well. Now, what condemns a person to hell? Let's go to Mark chapter 7. This scripture I'm about to read is found in other scriptures, so I saved us the time again not repeating those scriptures, and you'll find out that along this study that you, you might recall oh, isn't that in a different book as well and that is true and I'm not going to just uh, waste our time by reading it two three maybe even four times especially when it comes to Matthew Mark Luke and John let's go to Mark chapter 7 and here in Mark chapter 7 let's look here at verse 21 and we'll read down to 23 the Bible says in Mark 7 uh, uh, yeah, Mark 7, verse 21. For from within, uh, from within, out of the heart of men proceed evil thoughts, adulteries, fornication, murders, theft, covetousness, wickedness, deceit, lasciviousness, and evil eye, blasphemy, pride, foolishness. All these evil things come from within and defile the man. And if we're defiled at the end of time, we get to uh, burn. And that's not our goal. Our goal is to resist all of those things. And there is quite a list that we see that God is not uh, appreciative of. I mean, the, the one thing that jumps out at me as we live here in the end of time is that one in verse 21 that says fornication, adulteries. Uh, so I guess two of those. And the reason why that jumps out at me is that over the years, it seems that nudity seems to be more prominent. Uh, the bragging thereof seems to be more acceptable in society and uh, the free spirit of, of you know, exchanging uh, activities when you should be married to perform those activities, all of these things. Uh, the, the amount of skin that is shown today, both male and female for that matter, uh, the tightness of clothing, uh, the billboards that, uh, let's say, in the 1950s would have just been scandalous and you know, would not have been allowed. But today's censorship, even on t regular TV, there are the content on regular TV uh, that uh, I've been made aware of that uh, just cannot be allowed in the home. I mean, even the 
uh, the commercials, you might say, oh, I'll watch this uh, uh, nice little rerun that, that's uh, wholesome. And in between, they stick in these adult um uh, uh, commercials and that's just corrupting the mind and we're just supposed to be protecting the mind and that's what we're after with this study so uh, the reason why that jumps out to, at me is the fact that uh, Satan knows that that is one of the greatest temptations among human beings hence why with Balaam he could not stop blessing Israel until he got Israel to uh, trip up and then he was able to curse because well one of the abominations towards God since it is so intimate of a relationship is that of adultery and that's what the mighty men fell uh, according to numbers I believe it's chapter 25 um, there at uh, Shittim and uh, what a shame that these mighty men were able to conquer one foe after another one enemy after another and then um, the, the women of Moab draw their attention and they flaunt it right before Moses that Phineas has to get a javelin and uh, drive it through a couple in the mid middle of activity um, that shows at the edge of the promised land, that's all that that happened to be taken place right there at the promised land. That is a foretelling that as we near the end, uh, edge of the promised land, meaning the second coming, as it gets closer, that activity is going to increase exponentially to the point that it will truly be everywhere. And in fact, we're pretty much into it. Uh, the fact that mainstream media has to report on every uh, movement of celebrities and who wore what see-through dress uh, 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 the night before gets frontline news and that's uh, just awful uh, and it shows you what where we are in time <clears throat> if Satan is increasing he knows his time is very short now so what do, uh, do thoughts tend towards let's go to Isaiah 59 Isaiah 59 is where we're going now over here in the book of Isaiah, the 59th chapter, please. Uh, let's take a look here in verse 7. The Bible says in 59 verse 7, Their feet run to evil, and they make haste to shed innocent blood. Their thoughts are thoughts of iniquity. Wasting and destruction are in their paths. So, including the wasting of time... Um, you see, this is where I'm saying that when we think of wickedness, we think of murder and um, some serious uh, crimes, and we don't think of the little things, including like anger. Uh, as it was just described here, the, that the thoughts are of iniquity. Any iniquity, any sin that we think of committing, but don't even perform it, that is not acceptable to God whatsoever, and uh, th they are going to end up in destruction. And so, even the think thought of the laziness and, and thinking how I could just waste time, just, hmm, uh, let me, you know, I know I have had 12 hours of sleep last night. Uh, what, what's so wrong about another three? That's how you're thinking about wasting time. And by the way, no, I don't get 12 hours of sleep. I don't even get eight hours of sleep. And don't lecture me. I know that that's uh, not healthy. Uh, I've done my, my best. And so I'm taking advantage of the situation as I can see fit. I mean, last night, for instance, I got uh, uh, four hours of sleep in. And in the middle of the night, I, I tried just rolling over and going back to sleep. And after a half hour, I said, no, I'm going to take advantage of, of this Satan. And I'm going to sit up and read. And I read uh, a good hour's worth. And then I closed the book. Uh, I think I'm in Patriarchs and Prophets or something like that. In any case, I closed the book and rolled back over in bed. And uh, I was out and to only get another th three hours on top of that. And four plus three, by the way, is not seven. Uh, interrupted sleep is never the same as seven solid hours of sleep. And that's uh, basically my uh, pattern of sleep. Uh, let's go to Proverbs chapter 21. 
and take a look here adding to that and so I advocate getting your right amount of sleep uh, and I'm not one that says do as I say and uh, not as I do I'm not an advocate of that I wish I could actually get that type of beautiful sleep um, 21.5 is where we're going. 21.5 of Proverbs, that is. Proverbs 21, verse 5. The thoughts of the diligent tend only to plentiness, but of everyone that is hasty, only to one. So if we become impatient in our thoughts, we start a project, for instance, and get to the realization, oh, this is going to take much longer. Sure, you might be on a time schedule and you need to possibly postpone it, but to give up and say, no, uh, this isn't for me, uh, I'm not going to ever do this, then that goes against this verse. Um, you know, anything you start that takes longer than, than expected and to just throw in the towel and say, I, no, I, I, I want to do something else and you lose interest, uh, not good according to the Bible. We need to be disciplined in ourselves and train the mind to stop thinking that way. We need to be more diligent uh, in our exercise of things. So, we may have thoughts that are good, but uh, what does God show us? Let's go to Amos chapter 4. The book of Amos now. <clears throat> Amos. Let's go to Amos. And my pages are sticking again today. Uh, Amos is where we're headed. Amos. Uh, chapter 4. Let's look here at verse 13. Amos 4.13, the Bible says, <coughs> For lo, he... Th that formeth the mountains and createth the wind and declareth unto man what is his thoughts that maketh the morning darkness and treadeth upon the high places the earth the Lord the God of hosts is his name how many people think that I'm a pretty good person but when it's revealed of God what our thoughts really are how many times does that turn out to be crossing our our desires, if you would. We're living life this way, and then all of a sudden we realize that, oh, I'm being told that I'm not right with God, and it's such a little thing, and it, but it, it is so irksome. Are we so set in our ways that when God reveals it through a preacher, through the Word of God, um, and that includes the spirit of prophecy, uh, whatever method he uses to wake us up to no this is not an acceptable lifestyle yeah you've done a lot you've given up alcohol you've given up pork products and shellfish um, you, you've given up all, all these things you you dress better you eat better you exercise you're doing all these wonderful things however there is this little thing that I need to show you and when God reveals to us even though we think we've been pretty good if we resist um, we are not pretty good and besides that our goodness doesn't earn us anything to to get to heaven uh, our attitude though when God reveals something that's what counts uh, it's all about the will remember when it comes to God uh, so you know keeping all the commandments I'm a Sabbath keeper I'm going to heaven no you're going to heaven because of Jesus Christ and the blood uh, blood thereof so, how does God show us the, our real thoughts? I've already accidentally well, gave it away. Let's go to Hebrews. Hebrews chapter 4 is where we're headed now. In Hebrews 4, let's look here at the 12th verse. Hebrews 4 verse 12. For the word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged swords, piercing even to the dividing asunder the soul and spirit and the joints and the marrows and is a discerner of the thoughts there it is and intents of the heart remember this is a thought study 
And uh, so it's the Word of God that actually helps us understand, discern our own thoughts. If we go and check our own feelings and say, I'm a kind person, uh, you know, even muggers are kind to get their goal. Uh, not to accuse anybody here of being a mugger, but substitute mugger, uh, you know, someone trying to steal an old woman's purse or something like that, old lady's purse, um, substitute that scenario with whatever we want to justify in our lives. So how does God look upon uh, people's thoughts? Let's go to 1 Corinthians chapter 3 now. 1 Corinthians <clears throat> chapter 3. And let's look here at verse 18. 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 18, the Bible says, Let no man deceive himself. If any man among you seemeth to be wise in this world, let him become a fool, that he may be wise. And so a lot of people are well educated, even in the spirit of prophecy. Some people are so educated that they're missing the character of Christ. The character of Christ included being uh, inviting. How can so many people be flocking to him? Yes, they called to crucify him in the end, but when he was preaching, he preached some very hard messages. One, he d definitely uh, did on purpose to really show them that you're just following me for uh, what you're, you think the, uh, uh, the Messiah happens to be. They're expecting him to take the physical throne, basically. But when he kept pre preaching spiritually, 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 and then says, you have to eat my body and drink my blood, uh, that was enough for them. They didn't want to hear that, though it was symbolic. In any case, mothers brought their children, all the sick and the lame. Yes, they had the motive, oh, I want to be healed. Uh, all, But to draw thousands you know, the Pharisees couldn't even pack a house. And here we have uh, Jesus having to go out into the countryside so the people could actually hear him. Uh, and so he, he was very inviting. Uh, there are many that, oh, they know the spirit of prophecy so well, especially on how to conduct one's life. And without realizing him, their character comes across as very much unapproachable, and that is not the character of Christ. Now, at the other side, we have people that are so open and liberal, they allow anything, and when you come up to them and ask them a question of, do you think it's this is right or this is wrong, and, and they will always side with the person that's asking the question. So if they sense that, oh, you, uh, you want to do th those, those things, you know, I don't see any harm in it either. A and that's wrong, absolutely wrong. That's, n that's permitting sin. But there is a fine line between the two. So if we think that all liberalism is supposed to be rejected, uh, and we stick, to, and there's no danger of being uh, conservative in the spirit of things, uh, th then uh, we're mistaken. We can go to the opposite extreme as well, to the point where I have met a lot of people. In fact, I had to actually turn away a person from wanting to associate with that was just, uh, no, it's... Uh, not the character. It's not what I want to be influenced by. We have to make that decision. And um, and sadly, I had to part ways. Um, we need to be very, very careful uh, when it comes to, to those things. And so, uh, when we are so wise that we're unapproachable, we're in danger. When we are so wise of the ways of the world and can defend evolution, for instance, uh, that might be acceptable in society, uh, and not even evolution. Uh, defend the alphabet community, for instance. I, I don't know what it is. All I know is that when we are so wise that we can defend sin, we are a fool and f to God, and fools are not going to heaven. So from here, when it comes to the thoughts, what are we not able to become? James chapter 2 is next. So we may discern what's going on, but uh, what are we not to become? 
And we need to be very careful of this because as we be gain in knowledge, we are in danger of doing this. And it says here in James chapter 2, we're going to read verse 4. The Bible says in James 2, 4, Are ye not then partial in yourselves and are become judges of evil thoughts? When we think we can think for other people and set ourselves up for being judges, not only of their actions, but we think we know what they're thinking, we have stepped on forbidden territory. The thoughts are left with God. We cannot judge motives. We cannot judge what's in the heart of people. Only the actions can we question. And there we need to be very careful. I mean, outright sin is one thing. However, when we find someone doing something in ignorance, let's not drop a ton of bricks on them. Approach them very gently. Uh, to have conversation with. So over time, what changes are to happen with our thoughts? Let's go to 1 Corinthians chapter 13. So let's get a little encouragement of how to bring every thought into captivity, basically. The title of this sermon, 1 Corinthians chapter 13. So back there again, I guess you could have kept a bookmarker from a moment ago. Verse 11, the Bible says in 1 Corinthians 13, verse 11, When I was a child, I spake as a child. I understood as a child. I thought as a child. But when I became a man, I put away childish things. And that's the beginning uh, of things. You know, it's a, it's a child that is selfish. And uh, 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 no matter what you try to do to reason with a very young child, there is no reasoning. They want it, they want it now, and there is no discussing it. And so that usually ends up in uh, correction or you know, having to put up with a, a little bit of crying. And uh, nothing wrong with, with that as parents. But um, for ourselves, we got to stop being selfish. I mean, how many times have I introduced the Sabbath to a congregation that, in evangelistic meetings that didn't know about the Sabbath and immediately they're, they're thinking, oh, I won't be able to go to yard sales if I keep the Sabbath. Uh, my employer uh, wants me to work overtime and that's usually on Saturdays uh, and they just run down the list. Oh, that, that's my grocery day. That That's this day and that's that day. And, uh, I'm used to Sunday being the day of rest so I can watch my sporting events and all, all these. It's going to be so disruptive. That's all selfishness, outright selfishness. When we see what God asks of us, we drop the coins at the tax collecting uh, booth, get up and follow Jesus like Matthew did. Uh, when we haul in such a catch that we could be pretty wealthy, uh, we drop it and uh, we follow Jesus when he asks us to follow him. So when he points things out in our life, we drop those things. Oh, I'm not supposed to drink alcohol? Okay. And stop drinking alcohol. Oh, I'm not supposed to smoke? Okay. I, I'm, I'm not going to smoke. And all these other things. We That's our reaction. That's what it should be. And uh, for anything else, when we hesitate like that, we're a mere child in the mind. Our thoughts are childish. So, when we put up a fight against what God uh, shows us, that's where we are basically throwing many temper tantrums, that of a child. We need to be adults now. Uh, so, what actually needs to be repented of? Let's go to Acts chapter 8. So there's a call to repentance, and I wonder what that happens to be over here in Acts chapter 8. In Acts 8, let's take a look here. <clears throat> uh, in verse 22, the Bible says in Acts 8, 22, Repent therefore of this, day, of, of this thy wickedness, and pray to God, if perhaps the thoughts of thine heart may be forgiven thee. So th as I stated before, Simple thoughts of evil. Now, be careful. Every thought that comes into our mind is not of ourselves. Satan, through his evil agents, constantly are pushing in thoughts to our mind. 
hey, look over there. And, and you didn't realize that that's not your thought, but you react and, and look over there and you say, oh, wow, that is a, a, a pretty figure or a handsome figure. And, uh, and then now you're caught staring. Uh, we need to be careful of what thoughts come to mind uh, and acting upon it. Uh, every thought that comes to mind is, is temptation, but once it's conceived, once we accept it, and you know, and then in, instead of going, oh, I don't want to look at that, instead of doing that, and we go, not bad. Now we have conceived it. We didn't act upon it. Okay, yeah, I guess I said said some words. Let's take the words back and just simply just continue staring. Uh, what's going through our mind? at that moment more than just staring and appreciating and you're fantasizing it's definitely conceived and then if you walk away and don't do it that's still sin because you have conceived the thoughts in the mind and we need to be very careful of that what do we need to realize about our thoughts <clears throat> let's go to Isaiah 55 <clears throat> Isaiah chapter 55 is where we're going next In Isaiah 55, let's look here at verses 7 to 9. The Bible says, Let the wicked forsake his way, and the unrighteous man his thoughts, and let him return unto the Lord, and he will have mercy upon him, and to our God, for he will abundantly pardon. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, saith the Lord. For as the heavens are are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. And before I comment, let's go to Psalms 50. Psalms 50. <clears throat> Over here in Psalm 50, we're going to read verse 21. Psalm 50. In Psalm 50, verse 21. The Bible says here, <clears throat> These things hast thou done, and I kept silent. Though uh, thou thoughtest that I was altogether such as one of thyself, but I will reprove thee and set them in order before thine eyes. <clears throat> you know, society sometimes, sometimes, will try to do right. Uh, be kind, be whatever it happens to, to be. Uh, sometimes they do get that kind kindness going so much so that they will be kind to sin. And we need to be very careful of saying, yeah, uh, these people, they're just people. They're human beings. They should have a uh, access to to voting, uh, to uh, an education, and oh, they're e illegally coming into the country. Mm. Okay, so we need to be careful that we don't justify wrong activity, uh, sinful activity. There are laws for a reason, and God has laws as well, and we can justify anything against those commandments. Even, in fact, it will be justifiable to keep Sunday eventually. Uh, how else is a large amount of the Seventh-day Adventists going to start keeping that at some point when Sunday law comes in? It's, and we already had an example. Uh, in fact, I think there's uh, several examples over the past uh, 30 years, or uh, at least 25 years, that I've been a Seventh-day Adventist. I've been one for uh, over 30 years now. Uh, and in the past 25 years, I know of several churches that went from uh, uh, being Sabbath keepers to Sunday keepers. Whole congregation just moved right over former Seventh Day Adventists. And so, and one happens to had been that started it happened to be down in Maryland. And so, uh, we need to realize that the only way we're going to figure out God's way is through His Word. 
this whole what would Jesus do and not consult the word is making up our own Jesus. Unless we know the scriptures and are in it daily, studying for ourselves, not according to the dictates of the conference through the quarterly and say, yep, I studied my Bible this week. That is not studying your Bible. <clears throat> and we should be spending a thoughtful hour each day contemplating even the life of Christ and just simply looking at Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John uh, uh, is a good step, let's put it that way. But to get the whole knowledge of God, we need to be in the entire Bible. And so that takes a lot of work. And don't tell me you've read the Bible several times through. Reading it and studying two different things. So with that in mind, what are we to do with every thought? Here's our title of the sermon. Let's go to 2 Corinthians chapter 10 verse 5 the Bible says casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalted itself against the knowledge of God and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ so Christ has rules Christ has declared his word and when we live in obedience to those things we are also to bring every thought into it God is not like the Antichrist who accepts the mark of the beast in the forehead or uh, in the hand, thoughts and actions. Either way is good with, with the Antichrist. With God, it actually has to be in our thoughts, and our thoughts become actions. And going through the motions of obedience is not obedience. That's robotic. That's also a method of legalism, where hey, I've gone through the motion of keeping the Ten Commandments, including the Sabbath. I have even become a vegetarian, and I have done this and that. I, 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 yeah, you followed all the rules, so therefore you think you deserve heaven? Again, I cannot stress it enough. We are saved by the blood of Jesus. But if our attitude is, oh, okay, well then I won't worry about the commandments, and I won't worry about uh, being on a, a better diet, I won't worry about exercise and taking care of my body, all of that then is... Uh, sinful and can keep us out of heaven. Now, what is the consequence if we do not bring every thought into captivity? And as I just stated, it'll keep us out of heaven. Let's go to Jeremiah chapter 6 now. Jeremiah chapter 6. And over here in Jeremiah chapter 6, <clears throat> let's look here at verse 19. The Bible says in Jeremiah 6, 19, Here, O earth, behold, I will bring evil upon the people, even the fruit of their thoughts, because they have not hearkened unto my words, nor to my law, but rejected it. So he's going to, which didn't say actually going to hell, but the first stage of going to hell is to be handed over to their thoughts. Uh, so whatever they're thinking about will have easier access now and uh, would not be thought of as such a guilty pleasure, but actually just pleasure instead. Uh, even if you study the book of Romans, you see how God has given up on certain groups of people that burn and lust after uh, uh, one another. And uh, it's not good when God hands us over to our thoughts, not one bit. And, <clears throat> and so, uh, what are we to uh, not to have our thoughts stressed out about? See, <clears throat> as we approach the second coming, uh, life is getting a bit stressful, and God says, calm it down. Uh, in addition to bringing every thought into captivity to his obedience, you need to not basically kill yourself with the added stress. It's You cannot change the color of your hair. A leopard cannot... All right, so <clears throat> let's take a look here at... Uh, what should not be allowed to, uh, or I should say, what are we not to have our thoughts uh, stressed out about? Yes, that's what I was wanted to say. What are we not to be stressed about? Let's try to avoid as much stress as possible. Let's go to Luke chapter 12. Luke 12. In Luke 12, verse 22. The Bible says, but when, 
That's not 12, that's 11. Luke 12, verse 22, the Bible says, And I said unto the disciples, Therefore I say unto you, Take no thought for your life, that ye shall eat, neither for the body, that ye shall put on. So even the stress of, of where are our needs, these are basic needs, uh, don't stress about those, those things. Uh, let's go to verse 11. The Bible says in verse 11, And when they bring unto you the, into the synagogue and unto the magistrates and powers, take ye no thought how or what thing ye shall answer uh, or what ye shall say. For the Holy Ghost shall teach you in the same hour what ye ought to say. So allow the Holy Ghost to speak and stop stressing out. Well, uh, now, if you're brought into court because you did something evil, stress about that. But um, when you are called because you are living a godly life and they don't like your godliness and they have called you before magistrates, you know, they make all kinds of laws that you can't do or say certain things. And it goes against the Bible uh, and they call you upon it. Uh, this whole hate crimes is... Uh, very dangerous and it's a fine line get the wrong jury wrong judge and uh, they'll get you on that and so what we need to do is not stress about it God will give us through the Holy Ghost what we ought to to say let's go to Matthew chapter 6 Matthew chapter 6 here's the big one Matthew 6 And let's take a look here at Matthew 6, verse 34. Take therefore no thought for the tomorrow, for morrow, for the morrow shall take thought for the things of itself. Sufficient unto the day is the evil thereof. There's plenty of things that are happening today that we should uh, uh, be concerned about. So if you want to be stressed, stress about what evil happenings are happening right now, not uh, that which is happening around the world. In our own lives is what this is referring to. You deal with the problems that you're facing with this day. Don't worry about what may be coming in the future. Things have an interesting way of changing between now and then. Um, but there are so many people that are so stressed about this legislation, that legislation, so stressed about this earth activity, that moon activity, that uh, sun activity, the uh, galaxy activity, and the, um, you know there might be a meteorite that's coming our way. Scientists say so. All the media is hyped on purpose to keep you on edge. Why? So that you get so stressed out that your heart shall fail, and it's predicted it will be. And, uh, you know, back in, in the day, there was not so much of this hypeness day in and day out. And just when you think you got one thing, they leap you to the next thing, into the next thing, into the next thing, and they keep you on edge on purpose, uh, totally stressed out. It really helps with uh, popping the pills and seeing the psychiatrist and all other things done on purpose. So where should our thoughts be? Anytime we get stressed out like this, let's go to Malachi, Malachi chapter 3. And uh, when these thoughts come into our mind and we sense the anxiety building up, let's go to Malachi chapter 3 and verse 16 and see what we should be doing. Then they that feared the Lord spake often one to another, and the Lord hearkened and heard it, and a book of remembrance was written before him for them that feared the Lord and that thought upon his name. And so may we be thinking uh, upon the name of God. And what does that really mean? Let's go to Revelation chapter 7. Revelation chapter 7, and let's read two quick verses here or two passages, I should say, because the first one is in Revelation chapter 7, and we're going to read verses 2 and 3. The Bible says, And I saw another angel ascending from the east, having the seal of the living God, and he cried with a loud voice to the four angels, to whom it was given to hurt the earth and the sea, saying, Hurt not the earth, neither the sea nor the trees, till we have sealed the servants of our God in their foreheads. Now let's go over to Revelation 14 and make the connection. 
In Revelation 14, verse 1, the Bible says, And I looked, and lo, a lamb stood on the Mount Sion, and with him 144,000, having the Father's name written in their foreheads. And so we are to be focused on receiving the seal of God into our minds, developing the character even of Christ. That is what we're supposed to have on our mind. And I looked at Jesus. Jesus' life was daily a harassment, especially from the Pharisees, the lawyers, uh, the scribes, all of them just constantly. I mean, one town almost stoned him. It was constant. And what do we see? We do not see any moment that Jesus was stressed out. Let's learn a lesson from that. So, what are God's thoughts towards us? Let's go to Jeremiah chapter 29. Just a few more verses left here. Jeremiah chapter 29 is where we're headed. In Jeremiah 29. And take a look here at verse 11. Jeremiah 29 verse 11. The Bible says... For I know the thoughts that I think towards you, saith the Lord, the thoughts of peace and not of evil, to give you an expected end. And so God has peace. That's, that's what he strives for, to have peace with us. Sin separates us, and the more we participate of it, our thoughts should make us quiver. But when we look at God and say, okay, I, I, I understand that uh, you have this addiction, Let's work it out to over be an overcomer. He doesn't want to destroy us. He's doing everything in, a, in his allowance to make sure that we are not destroyed. But in the end, it's our choice. What will God reveal to every person that will be outside of the New Jerusalem? And here we definitely have future time. Let's go to Isaiah is where we're going. Isaiah 66 and uh, I told you that this subject, as the prior two, would lead us eventually to prophecy. Isaiah 66, verse 18, the Bible says here, For I know their works, that their thoughts, it shall come that I will gather all nations and tongues, and they shall come and see my glory. And let's follow up quickly with Psalms 94, Psalm 94, Psalm 94, and take a look here at verse 11. The Bible says, The Lord note the thoughts of man that they are vanity. And so God's going to reveal to every nation that is gathered together on to the New Jerusalem, and he's going to reveal to them so that they know why they are outside the city. And um, they're going to realize how vain they were in their thoughts. That I traded eternal life for this? The, are these thoughts, that is? That I live my life to gain fame, so many likes on Facebook, uh, all these these things. I guess Facebook is like a, a dead thing anyways, but it doesn't matter. Whatever it happens to be, that's what people strive for, popularity, fame, uh, wealth, uh, all kinds of things. And uh, it's all vain, absolutely vain. So, what counsel is given to us? That's our last question, and I have a number of verses to guide us, and may we follow the, the counsel. God wants to see us in heaven. How are you, you and I going to respond to this message? Will we bring every thought into captivity to the obedience of, thy, of His will, or will we allow the world's stress to be upon us, or distractions be influencing us? It says in Proverbs 16, verse 3, Commit thy works unto the Lord, and thy thoughts shall be established. So if everything we go to do 
we ask it if this is approved of God. And yeah, things that are not godly are approved of God when they are done uh, with the motive of pleasing God. So if your job is to dig holes, dig it to the glory of God. If your job is to make food, do it to the glory of God. Um, it doesn't mean, oh, okay, that means I got to, everything I go to do, it has to be godly. Let me spend 10 hours a day in the Bible or something like that. No, that's not what it means. But everything needs to be done on a godly respect. If you're an accountant, uh, add up those numbers and subtract those numbers godly. Let's go to Proverbs chapter 12, verse 5. The Bible says here in Proverbs 12 and verse 5, The thoughts of the righteous are right, but the counsels of the wicked are deceit. Let's avoid all deceivableness whatsoever. Let's go to Psalms 119. And so our thoughts are always right. That is not just a, uh, you're mostly right. Every moment, everything that comes into our mind to be spoken should be righteous. Uh, Psalms 119, 113. So 119, verse 113. It says here, I hate vain thoughts, but the law do I love. Let's focus on uh, what the commandments say that speak to our hearts. And let's avoid all vain things. Turn off the TV. Turn out off the music. Uh, turn off reading the material that just feeds into having wrong thoughts. And finally, let's go to Psalms 139, verse 23. 139. hundred and thirty nine and verse twenty three search me O God and know my heart try me and know my thoughts this one's a tough one and that's the reason why I saved it to the end folks we don't want to go into Sunday law unknowing if we are thinking right so while there is time we should actually be asking God for the trials and tribulations in our lives. It could be the simple thing as hitting your thumb with a hammer. How do you react to that? Do the curse words come to, to mind? Uh, do you give up on the project because you hurt your thumb? Um, whatever it happens to be. Do we have a bad reaction? And, uh, you know, even though you, you might say, man, every project I hit my thumb. That's because we must not be reacting in the proper manner, hence why it keeps happening. Otherwise, we're just careless. But substitute hitting the thumb with anything that we go through that is so frustrating. Frustrations should not be uh, a part of our life. We should be in um, uh, uh, keeping in captivity every thought, hence why I made that the title as opposed to what does the word thoughts mean? Bring every thought into captivity. And by the grace of God, we will be able to pray to God, help me, because I, I, you know, it's one thing that I have my own thoughts, but you're telling me that I'm being inundated with evil thoughts from this evil angel that cannot read the mind, but they sure can push in, in the thoughts. Where did that thought come from? An evil angel has drummed it up. You might have totally forgotten Gotten what happened 36 years ago and then all of a sudden boom it comes to the forefront why evil angel wants to stir things up and how do we deal with these things we need God's help so pray and that doesn't mean you have to get on your knees to pray and you're in a moment situation lift up a word to God help me oh God surround me with thine angels push these thoughts from me Help me to react properly. That's what we ought to do. And by God's grace, we will. Let's pray. Our Father, thank you so very much for this time to have spent with you. We pray that we can bring every thought into the captivity to the, thy will, the obedience that is. Because not only are the thoughts to be in obedience, then our actions ought to follow that they too would be in obedience. And that allows you to, uh, well, wash away our sins uh, by the blood of the Lamb. Uh, 
uh, that will allow you to continue to work in our lives because our hearts are open to learning more and more and you will reveal what's more pleasing to you so that you would prepare us to be able to dwell with holy beings, including yourself, who knew no sin. And I pray that we would uh, um, allow you into our lives, be completely submissive, humble in all that we go to do, and may you receive the glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.